Wednesday. A small town on the coast of Humberside, just north of the mouth of the Humber at Spurn Point. Originally, a small hamlet somewhere from the coast, as this map of 1695 shows. Just over a century later, the eroding coastline is much nearer to Withensea. By the 1850s, Withensea and the neighbouring village of Arthorn had grown into each other, as shown by the shaded area. Plans were made for new housing development, seen in the lower left-hand corner, and Mr Anthony Bannister proposed a Withensea to Hull Railway to bring holidaymakers and trade along the lines seen even from the lower right of the town. Within a few years, the town centre had grown to support several hotels and other holiday industries. Many were built on the new Seaside Road and Bannister Street, named to one of the town's benefactor. Nowadays, the town is bigger, and although the railway is closed, its course can still be clearly seen running through the town. Despite the obvious fascination of maps and books, they are not living memories. They cannot really document the day-to-day -day detail of ordinary people's lives. To discover more of Wilmington's history, we spoke to Councillor Harold Turner, a lifetime resident of the area. We asked him if he had many early memories from his childhood here. Then plenty, plenty, plenty. I was born in 1908. And I've lived here ever since, so you can work that out. <laughs> so, memories of, our, memories of early days in Wilmington, going to school and before I went to school. You will uh, uh, probably not realise, but uh, my father was one, and I can't find the photograph I've tried to, was at the original opening of the school, and he was the original um, correspondent, they called them then. And uh, he was then, they called them um, school board. I remember all that. And, and then when I came to school, and he was still a governor, as they'll tell you in the um, centenary book that uh, he did 35 years. There's also a photograph of me and uh, my eight brothers in there too, and I can show you it if you'd like to know. A photograph of me as a small child in the centenary book. <laughs> so uh, I can go back to a long period in the school and uh, general life in Withensea. Uh, when I came, first came to school, I can show you a, a photograph that there was only one side to Queen Street, where Woolworths and all that was what we call Donkey Field. Uh, oh, it's on there, that's right, yes. And, uh, and, uh, there was only one car, <laughs> only one car in Wethersley, and that had belonged to a, a Dr. Sproul. And so, in those days, we had to go home for lunch and come back again. And uh, we lived uh, right just past the rugby field on the opposite side of the road. What uh, house is called Del Martin, and it was the last house in Wethersley, and uh, it was opposite uh, what we knew as Mrs. Drury's farm. Now we used to even play football as we went home in the street. You could kick a ball about and that was the best and quickest way of getting home. And back again for after lunch. And of course we did the same at night. But even in those days uh, with, with gaslight, gas lamps which was produced by the oldest gas company, which was at the bottom of Park Avenue, and uh, they existed until the, the gas uh, authority was uh, nationalised. And uh, we used to go down there as children and uh, get into trouble. <laughs> used to go watching them draw the retorts and all that sort of thing. But, uh, Life then was uh, was very interesting because uh, you must realise with neither television nor or even wireless, and that's something that you would like to know that got missed out of the 
uh, centenary bell. My, my eldest brother lives at Pickering and I visited him last year sometime or other and he's, he's, he's 89 and he informed me that the children used to go from the school to watch Marconi testing his apparatus out on the North Cliff. We had two football teams in Wednesday, one we called North End and the other was Chevron Avenue. But there was so, such a lack of uh, somewhere to play. Our own mat, our own ground was in Martha Leet Hull. So when we had a mo uh, home match, we had to all of us travel to Hull. And of course, um, when the two teams met, it was all blood and thunder, you know. <laughs> you were <laughs> determined to win at all costs. But uh, we uh, got through very well. Oh, there was another thing which we enjoyed as a child, which I don't know that it takes uh, place now, but uh, we used to go on Sunday school trips. We went to Fountains Abbey, Bolton Abbey, uh, and of course we always went where we used to fill a train, and we used to go by train, and you, that was an annual event. Uh, of course, uh, as um, when we got old enough, I don't know what age we would be, probably 11 or 12, we used to, uh, quite a lot of us, go along with a box on wheels to carry the visitors' luggage. That's how we earned our pocket money. All the train times, and it, it, it was a fight as to who could be first in the line and, and, and for the, the luggage. And wherever they were going, of course it was all, there was no such things as um, trailer parks, or that sort of thing. Uh, it was all um, lodging houses then, boarding houses and that sort of thing. Besides the Queen's, the uh, Alexandra and uh, the Pier Hotel used to fill up with visitors. Uh, and, uh, and there's one thing probably you don't know about the train, but uh, of course when it first started, when it was first opened, there were wood carriages. And my father used to tell us that um, they had an express morning and night, same as they had uh, when it w was removed. But in the early days, it did it ten minutes faster than when it was taken off. Uh, and the reason was that they started to build uh, steel carriages, the extra weight, and it reduced the speed. And uh, when I, I left Withensy School, I had got a scholarship to the old school of art, so I started travelling on the train. Now, now, the business people at that time used to have little bets with the engine driver. This is just a sideline as to whether he could get them in in half an hour, which, uh, and uh, it was most exciting because <laughs> you would think you were coming off the lines. And there's another thing that probably you youngsters don't realise, that uh, in severe winter weather, uh, between Withensea, uh, well, well, yes, but just at the end of the golf links, between Withensea and Patterson, you couldn't see the lines because the entire area was flooded, what we call the cars. Do you remember anything of the lighthouse when it was first erected? No, I don't. We all used to be taken up it. I've been up it lots and lots of times. But uh, a lighthouse was erected in 1893. So uh, I wasn't born until 1908. <laughs> do, you, do you recall any of the wrecks that have scattered the coast? Oh, yes, quite a lot. We saw quite a lot. Um, and of course, uh, when the Second World War started, uh, we had plenty of wrecks to see. <laughs> um, I saw uh, one of the coal uh, carriers blown up and uh, the local fishermen and uh, with, uh, also with the then uh, surveyor of Woodham Sea, uh, uh, Mr. Ratcliffe, pull out in, in boats to go and rescue the could, you see, and they, they did actually uh, get them into the boats, but uh, I don't think any of them lived. They were too badly mauled with, with the explosions. Uh, what effect did the wars have on Woodham Sea? There was. Yeah. Well, uh, during the, I can remember the First World War because uh, I'd got old enough then to, to understand. And uh, um, well, we ha actually 
we had bombs dropped around here and the first great excitement was uh, in an air raid that uh, blew the top off the black mill. You know the black mill at uh, Thunderstorm? It was in perfect condition and uh, the uh, Jerry's hit it, not absolutely with a direct hit, but they blew the top off, right off. Uh, and it's never been uh, used as a mill or it's just deteriorated ever since. And then uh, we had uh, several uh, um, bombing raids around this. Uh, and the first, my first re real recollection of the very first raid was that my father instructed everybody to uh, go downstairs and get under tables and in doorways, one thing or another. And, uh, one of my elder brothers apparently had picked me up out of bed and taken me downstairs, but unfortunately he carried me down upside down by my feet. <laughs> and uh, he dropped me and I got quite a, a nice lump on my head. So, mm, Is there any truth to, truth to the story we've heard about uh, the pier towers being used as practice? Oh yes, now I can tell you something about the pier towers, because I've been in them several now. Underneath the pier towers, right underneath, is uh, quite a large room as big as this. Now, it, there's a tunnel to it out of the bowling greens. And uh, you got into this tunnel and it, it, walk, it goes across the road and you come out into this room underneath the pier towers. Now, during both wars, it was used for gun emplacements. Uh, they knocked holes through where uh, you can see have been bricked up because of the different bricks. And they had Lewis guns in there all the time. Not, nothing any bigger, but there were Lewis guns and uh, there was three uh, for the protection of the coast. Because in the first world war, and same in the second, they thought Withensee was an area where the invasion would land because, because of its lowness and low cliffs. Off of, uh, the top of, uh, top of St. Nicholas Church. And during the, it caused quite a lot of excitement um, in Wuthensee during the First, uh, the Second World War. Uh, we had a German plane uh, brought down on the beach at the south end, right against what the brick pond. And unbeknown to anything, four Wuthensee boys uh, raided it, and they got the machine gun off it. Uh, successfully, without anyone seeing, got it up into the church, up the tower, and put it on the top of the tower, pointing out at one of these things. And they were going to defend with, see, with this machine gun when it was attacked. While we're talking about St. Nicholas, there was two churches built by two sisters on the north there, at what we call the North Cliff, and uh, they were eventually washed into the sea. But when I was a boy on extreme low tides, you could see all the rubble. And, and uh, there was a, a Mr. Westerdale who, who built a, a lovely house, in fact, the nicest house in Wuthersea, called Clevelly at the bottom of Victoria Avenue. Sorry to say it was pulled down to build the um, day centre. But I contacted the uh, Humberside County Council committee and asked them whatever they did not to remove there's a stone arch and it's still there I saw it yesterday because we paid an official visit to the new bungalows now those stones are from those original churches as I, I've just told you that the, the pier towers have a gun emplacement inside uh, when I was going to school there was just a little bit just a few yards with two pillars here which uh, a storm like we had, uh, bad, isn't it? Uh, Wednesday, was it? Yes. Uh, removed all but the two pillars, and as kids we used to lock uh, on them. This, of course, only had rails along here, not this, these, this that was put to stop the um, soldiers, kind of, tanks and whatnot during the Second World War. And here, where the slope is, of course, this is where the heroes and all the entertainment used to take place. Uh, two sessions a day, one in the afternoon and one at night. And uh, we used to come and uh, sit around for free entertainment. <laughs> Do you think they've done anything for Wuthensee at all? Do you think well, that's a rather ticklish question. <laughs> Do you think they've brought in a bad influence of people or not? Or what? <laughs> it's very difficult to say. 
um, you see, in my day, the amusements were on the beach because uh, coast erosion has reduced our sand area and beach to what it was. And uh, the periods, as we call them, um, were then stationed at the end of uh, Seaside Road and so were all the boats and all, all the amusements and swings and everything. They didn't start to move into uh, Memorial Avenue until some time after the First World War. And then between the two wars, it advanced immensely. That was, that was at the period we were out having the most wonderful carnivals ever. Uh, uh, the carnivals were so successful, it brought too many people, thousands upon thousands. And they were sleeping on the beach and sleeping in folks' gardens. And uh, we all took part. I, we, we, the local clubs, uh, you see, when we got into our teenage, we had our own clubs, what we call the 20 Club. Uh, we're all teenagers and, and we run it ourselves. Yes, and uh, folks used to cycle through then from Hull, including children to grown-ups. But, uh, but the amusement thing now is because they've grown out of all proportion. And um, it certainly brings a certain type. And of course we hadn't bingo. Bingo, I mean, dominates everything almost. So it's a very divided opinion in Withers as to whether it's good or bad. And I wouldn't like to criticise either side. What about the Sunday market that is now using the old railway site, Councillor Turner? How do you feel about it? Your, your present market, uh, of course the new borough has just bought all the old uh, railway and the land that the market's on and of course there's going to be a lot of debate and public meetings as to uh, what happens to it all. Because here again I've been approached by folks that don't like the market, they don't like the dirt it creates or the, uh, or the folks that it brings. And then there's others that think it's Withens' salvation. So you youngsters are going to see what does materialise, whether it stays or what the development will be. If they're going to develop the old station site, uh, they'll have to do something. Uh, and so uh, that, that's one thing they've got to get over. Uh, I understood from Mr. Law, the chief executive, that he, he's already had a talk with the scrap merchant about moving and uh, the talks so far were favourable, so we, we, we shall see. Uh, the industrial estate is just being erected further up the road. Yes. Well, what are your views on that? Well, like all uh, local council, like all local people, I suppose, uh, my wish is that it uh, is some benefit and it, it uh, is a success, but... One of Withens' great industrial successes of recent years has undoubtedly been the Eastgate Pottery. I understand that you have something to do with it being sited here in the town. Could you enlighten us about this development, please? I was personally responsible for getting the pottery to Withens, eh? Withensea Council built the first section of the pottery and then later on the uh, Eastgate Pottery bought it and they built the last section on the top. Uh, and uh, let's say it's been a huge success. Withensea has an uncertain future. What do you think the future of Withensea is? They all pressure from uh, within the council, even when I first ran, was to attract people to live here. And it should be the same now. It was until reorganisation, of course. Um, the Cars Meadow was all organised by the Within Service District Council, and of course it was going great guns until reorganisation and the mortgage trouble started, and of course it stopped. Within the advanced, and I think there'll come a period when it was a, once mortgages are available, uh, I'm sure Willensey will start in advance again. Uh, you, you see, in my period, the population was about um, 4,000-something, 4,500. Uh, but, of course, just prior to uh, reorganisation, Willensey was going like a bomb. I mean, uh, and uh, the population, had, it was over 6,000, and, and it's almost seven now. That I think it's, 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 
How can I people like it? That Withensee one day would become a Blackpool.